Let us pray. Father, as we gather here this morning, we have opened up our hearts to you. And Lord, as we go to your word this morning, speak to us through your Holy Spirit. Move our hearts, Father, into a closer relationship with you that our lives might reflect your character and love. We ask in Christ's precious name. Amen. We live in a time that we have never been so connected and so disconnected at the same time. We have technology that can keep us in touch with anybody and everybody at any time. You've seen the commercials. Maybe you've experienced it in your home. You're spending quality time with the family in your family room with the TV on so you can keep up with the current news only to hear that little device in your pocket go ping and you look at it and oh my goodness, it's a text message from your son who is sitting three feet away from you that has gone out to 10 different people. We live in an amazing age, don't we? We can be so disconnected and so disconnected. We can be so caring and so uncaring at times. We know that people love us, but somehow we don't stay in touch. It's two o'clock in the morning, and you're taking inventory as you wake up one early morning or haven't gone to bed one time late at night. And you go, I know my family loves me. I know my spouse, my kids, my grandmother, my children. Or you say, I wonder. I haven't heard from them. But come to think about it, I haven't tried to be in touch with them either. Who really cares anyway? You turn on the news at that time of the morning and they will sell you, they will sell you exercise programs. You will turn to the other channel that will be a diatribe of all of the news bits about who's ahead in the polls and who's not until finally you drift off to sleep. So who is it that cares for you anyway? And where do you find meaning and purpose? It's an age-old question that from time to time haunts us in the quietness of the earliness of the morning, the lateness of night, and at times the estrangement of our souls with God. However, we go to our anchor verse here in just a moment to find some answers about connecting with God, the one who cares for us. He was racing up the curved mountain road in his Porsche out for a good afternoon when he spotted on the side of the mountain what looked to be just a white blob on the side of the mountain against the green grass. As he turned the corner, he downshifted into third gear to get a little more RPM and then down into second. And he thought, I've got just a few minutes to spare here. And as that Porsche roared around the curve, he pulled off the road and climbed up the dirt road. He pulled over, turned the engine off, and he got out, dressed in his Armani suit, 
with his very expensive Rolex, Rolex watch. He was going someplace important, but he had just a few minutes. He walked up to the old man who was tending to this flock of sheep. And he said, if I can tell you how many sheep are in your flock, would you give me one? The shepherd thought for just a minute, and he said, sure. The young executive quickly went back to his car, pulled out his computer, connected his laptop to his mobile wire, wireless phone, entered in, his, entered in his NASA Webster, scanned the ground using GPS, opened a database with 60 Excel tables filled with uh, logarithms and pivotal tables. Then he prints out a 150-page report on his high-tech mini printer. He turns to the shepherd and says, I see you have 1,586 sheep here. Rather surprised, the shepherd replies, that's correct. You can have any one of the sheep that you'd like. The young man takes the animal, puts it in the back of his Porsche. Just as the man is about to drive off, the shepherd asks him a question. If I guess your profession, will you return my animal to me? The young man answered, yes, why not? The shepherd says, I think you're an IT consultant. How did you know? Surprised, the young man asks. Very simple answers the shepherd. First, you came here without being called. Secondly, you charged me to tell me something I already knew. Third, you don't understand my business. You don't understand anything about my business. Now, can you please return my dog back to me? Sometimes we muse at reflecting on simple stories. And sometimes the simple stories are so easy to understand. But we want to go to John chapter 10 to peel back some of the nuances in John chapter 10. For there we find John chapter 10 describing the story of the sheep, the shepherd, and we'll just kind of peel that story back. In John chapter 10, we find there the story of the good shepherd. Now, in order that there be a shepherd, there has to be what? Sheep. Sheep are interesting animals. I love sheep. They are so gentle. And a lot of people think sheep are not very bright, when in actuality, they are quite wise in comparison to other animals. They, they are often thought as stupid sheep, but they're actually rather smart sheep. For they know one of the things for survival is they can't be off roaming by themselves. They have to flock together to stay safe. They have to, they have to realize that there's safety in numbers. In fact, a, a flock of sheep realized that in order to, cro uh, to cross a cattle, um, a cattle guard, a cattle gate, now some of you may know what that's about, some of you don't. So for those of you who have not had the pleasure of driving in farm country, a cattle gate is, is a gate or a crossing that might be about this wide, and it's pipes laid in parallel. And the cattle can't get across the pipe because their hoof goes down in between. So they'll get up to it, cars can drive over it, but cattle can't get across it. Now sheep have figured out a way to cross that cattle gate. Now you think sheep aren't very smart. Here's what a flock of sheep did. The first one got down, it got down on its side and decided to roll like a log across that 
cattle gate. The second one, seeing what the first one did, duly followed until the full flock was on the other side of that cattle gar. Sheep are fairly smart. Sheep have a great remembrance. They remember other sheep up to two years after uh, they've met them in the flock. They're an amazing group of animals. Scientists have set up mazes similar to the complexities of measuring the intelligence of rats. And sheep can go through those mazes six months later once they've learned them. Sheep are smarter than previously thought. Sheep have, uh, have brain power equal to rodents, monkeys, and sometime, in some tests, even humans. Now don't ask me which humans that they tested or how they ran that test on sheep. I'm not sure. It's simply reported. Sheep are amazing, amazingly smart, that they know how to self-medicate when they're sick. They know what plants uh, and herbs to eat to remedy that which ails them. We often think as sheep as not too bright, when in actually, actuality, sheep are rather gifted and intelligent, uh, intelligent animals. So the shepherd has sheep. There are about 3.68 million sheep in the United States, and they produce wool that have a total value of about $39.2 million a year. Now, those of you that have worked with sheep know that if you put your hand in the wool and rub that sheep for any length of time, your hand will come out and feel just a little bit greasy. It's the lanolin that is natural lanolin in among that wool. Your, uh, when it rains, the sheep have a natural raincoat in their wool. It's a great product. It's the only product that when, if you have a sweater on and you get wet, you'll stay warm. All of the other uh, fabrics, uh, you'll lose heat from your body. Well, sheep are wonderful, thing, are wonderful animals. They're some of the brightest and some of the most foolish at times. You thought I was going to say the other word, didn't you? They are some of the most foolish. They're the most foolish because they will wander off by themselves. They will follow, they will follow the, uh, the crowd. One sheep goes over the edge. The next sheep will say, hey, he's going someplace I ought to go to, right over the edge, until the last sheep is over the edge and the whole flock is down the side of the mountain. Isaiah says in Isaiah 53, verse 6, all we like sheep have what? gone astray. We've turned everyone to our own way, and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. All we like sheep have what? Gone astray. That means me. That means you. That means the person to the left of you, the person to the right of you, the person in front of you, the person behind you. That means we have at all, all of us have at different times gone astray. And at any given time, we are likely to go astray. Because we are called sheep, easy followers at times to our own detriment. But the good news, friends, the good news is that sheep have a good shepherd. Sheep have a good shepherd. I'd invite you to open your Bibles to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. But we have an amazing good shepherd. In John chapter 10, we find there the story of the good shepherd, which you already know so well. But in context, we find that Jesus has healed the uh, the blind men, his restored sight to the blind men. We know that he's the light of the world in context. Now he's going to tell the Jews, not only has he done all of this, but he's going to make it known that he is the good shepherd that comes to protect his sheep. Verily I say unto you in John chapter 10 verse 1, He that enters the fold, not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs 
upon some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. And the stranger they will not follow, they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. I like that, don't you? I like that. The sheep know the voice of the shepherd. The sheep know how to tune in to the Holy Spirit. The sheep can recognize truth from error as they connect themselves with the good shepherd. The parable that Jesus spoke, verse 6, unto them they understood not what things they were which he said unto them. Then said Jesus again unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pleasure. But the thief comes for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it what? abundantly, more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd that gives life, giveth his life for the sheep. I love that passage. How about you? How about you? Aren't you glad you're called sheep in Scripture? Aren't you glad you're called sheep in Scripture and you have a good shepherd who cares for you at all times? In good times, in rough times, at 2 a.m., at 4 a.m., when you're thinking of him, when your thoughts are on something else. He says, I am the door. You have to understand that expression in context. For you see, when the shepherd would take the flock out in the morning to find green pastures and still waters, that the flock might eat and have water, at night when the flock was at risk, He would bring them into often a cave out in Palestine and place them in the cave. And then he would would lay down across the entrance of that cave. Now, sheep occasionally will wander and try to get out. They've got to cross over the body of the shepherd, who's going to tell them very gently, depending upon what hour he wakes up, go back and go to sleep. I'm sleepy now. About the fourth time, he might do it with a little more sternness. However, not only do they feel secure with the realization that they recognize the voice, they also realize the shepherd is watching out for them. Harm cannot come. The coyotes might um, howl off in the distance, but they have to cross over the good shepherd to get to the sheep. I'm glad he's my good shepherd. How about you, friend? Who really cares for us anyway? Does it matter? When we are Christ's, he is our good shepherd. He comes that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He says, I am the door if any man enter in. He shall be saved, in verse 9, and shall go in and come, uh, come out and find pasture. But the thief comes not to ste- uh, but to steal and kill. I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus not, is not only the good shepherd, the sheep, the shepherd, the sacrifice is talked about in John chapter 10. He says, As the Father knows, even so know I the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. The shepherd at times, you must, you must this afternoon read again Psalm 23. The imagery of the shepherd taking the sheep beside still waters. You must read John chapter 10. You must read Isaiah 53. We'll go there in a minute. 
and then 1 Peter 5, chapter 5. Okay, so we're going to move rather quickly. We have sheep, we have a picture of the shepherd. But let's look for a few minutes this afternoon at his sacrifice. Verse 15, John chapter 10, As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. Other sheep have I, not of this fold. Them also must I bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it up again. Let me ask you, friends, how many sheep does God have in the greater Santa Clarita Valley today? How many sheep? How many sheep? Somebody take a guess. Say what? Six hundred. Okay. How many sheep? does God have in the Santa Clarita Valley today? 250,000? Sheep that wander from God, are they still His sheep? Yes. Sheep that are not aware of Him, are they still His sheep? The sign on the highway says 213,657 people in the Santa Clarita Valley are his sheep. So let me ask you, as his under-shepherds, how are we doing? Hmm. The good shepherd comes not only for the good sheep, that hear and follow His voice, that assemble week by week, the Good Shepherd comes to call back the sheep that are wandering. The Good Shepherd extends His love, His calling, His invitation via you, via me, via my influence, via your influence at work, to everyone you come in contact with. You see, He didn't die for 200 people. He didn't die for 500 people. He died on the cross that all might hear His voice. And our, our responsibility to Him is never finished until we share His amazing grace, His love, and His sacrifice with others. He says, other sheep have I not of this fold. Isaiah 53, for just a moment. All we like sheep have what? Gone astray. We have turned everyone in his own ways, and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, verse 7 says, he was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he didn't open his mouth. He he, brought, he was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before the shears is dumb, he did not open his mouth. He was taken from prison, from judgment, that who should declare his, um, his generation? He was cut off of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. He, was, he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise, bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, so shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And he shall see the travail of soul and be satisfied. By the knowledge shall my righteous servant be many, for he shall bear their iniquities. He has poured out his soul unto death and bear the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. An amazing, an amazing story of love from sheep 
to shepherd, to sacrifice. An incredible thing. So let me ask you the question. Who cares anyway? For it takes me to the last part of our message today, which talks about the Good Shepherd. First Peter chapter five. First Peter chapter five. Who cares? Somebody calls you and says, I don't know what to do. You know the verse very well. I'm going to take you to the verse in chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Then we're going to back up and put it in context. It says, casting all your cares upon him, the one who has offered himself as a sacrifice for you, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Now let me be perfectly clear. Whether you're seven, whether you're 17, and you don't know what life is all about, you've broken up with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, you have warfare at home, you don't know what to do about, mom and dad are fighting, you've been kicked out of school three times, you're on probation, for the fourth time. There won't be any more schooling after this. Maybe your, your job at work isn't going well. You're, you're late in marriage, in the cycle of marriage, and you're into, into the winter months where it feels like an iceberg relationship. Why doesn't he change? If only she would change, something would be different. Who cares anyway about life? At those times, in those silent moments, let the Good Shepherd have ringing in your ear and in your mind. 1 Peter 5, verse 7. Cast all your cares on Him, for He cares for you. First Peter chapter 5, for just a moment or two. The elders which are among you, verse 1, I exhort whom you are also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory shall be re, uh, revealed. And then he uses the imagery of the shepherd and the flock. Feed the flock which is among you, taking oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not by filthy lucre, but of ready mind. Neither as lords over God's heritage, but being examples for the flock. When the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. Likewise, you younger submit unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, Peter says, therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, whom resisteth steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But by the grace of God, by the, um, but by God of all grace, who has called you unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ. After that, have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthened, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. What an amazing story tucked here in John chapter 10. John chapter 10 was trying to tell the Jews this message of goodness and grace is not extended just to you, but to every person you come in contact with. The good news 
of John chapter 10 is the good shepherd has his sheep. He pursues his sheep even when they wander away. Even when they turn their backs. He pursues them. He loves them. He offered himself as a sacrifice. He is the good shepherd. He cares and loves you with eternal love and grace today. Who cares? God cares. Let us pray. Father, when we consider our lives, we have to reflect back and say at times, we have gone astray. We've not been as sensitive, Father, to the promptings and calling of your Holy Spirit. And Father, in the areas in our hearts and in our lives where we've not made made them fully yielded to you, Father, we would ask, that as we open them to you now, you will take the fullness of our life. We bring it, Father, just as we are, with a full realization, Lord, that the sacrifice of your Son on the cross, the shepherd dying for the sheep, is so amazing that it just fills us with awe. So, Father, as we go forth from this place, fill us, Father, with your Spirit. And gently, as our Good Shepherd, care for us. Keep us in the safe, safety of your flock, that we might have the abundant life that you promised in John chapter 10. Thank you for caring and bless us through Christ's precious name. Amen.